Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is video three of Signal Integrity and Electromagnetic Compliance Training for Mere Mortals. Uh, more information on SIEMC.com. My goal is to teach everyone in the universe how to design high-speed digital and analog and RF systems that work right and pass FCC and CISPR tests on the first try. I'm Terry Fox. Off we go. Okay, this is ringing, overshoot, undershoot. If I was to have a headline statement here, it would be the fact that ringing is the root of all evil. So in high-speed digital systems, it's that reflection uh, between source and load that causes the problem. Now, if I had the impedance of the source and the impedance of the load and the impedance of the transmission line matched, like for example we would have in radio work, I might have a 50 ohm transmitter going into a 50 ohm coax, going into a 50 ohm load or a 50 ohm antenna. So if those three were matched there would be no reflection. Now what's the problem with uh, what I would call raw CMOS? Well, it's the fact that the driver is probably around 3 ohms. The, the, the trace, maybe a 4 mil trace, 4 mils over the ground plane, something like that, that probably looks like 65 ohms, maybe 60 ohms, someplace in that neighborhood. And then when I look at the load, that looks like megs and puffs. So what I've got is a very low impedance into a medium impedance into a brick wall. And so consequently what I end up with is energy reflecting off the load and coming back and we end up with this sort of like uh, water sloshing in a tub sort of problem that's going on here. Now why is it that that is a problem now and it didn't used to be as much of a problem? Well the point behind it is that the rise times of our signals have gotten faster and faster and faster as the uh, clock rate has gone up. If I go back to when I started this business, uh, probably a reasonable uh, rise time on a signal would be 10 nanoseconds. Well, 10 nanoseconds at six inches per, uh, you know, per nanosecond would mean that from the time the signal was at a low till the time the signal got up here, the physical distance on the board would be on the order of about five feet. Now, when that happens, that says that, gee, if that load is, say, six inches away, then the signal can only rise a very small portion. In that case, only 10% of the rise time uh, would be there in that, uh, you know, in, in the six inch uh, distance because the full rise time would be 10 inches. Uh, you know, 10 times 10 times uh, 10 nanoseconds would be 60 inches. So if I only went six inches, then that would only be 10 percent of those 60 inches. So consequently, the the voltage could only rise a very small portion. Well, if the voltage at the source and the voltage at the load are the same voltage at the same point in time, I can ignore for the most part this interconnect, but when they are separated far enough that I can get some significant difference between the voltage at the source and the voltage at the load, then I have to deal with this thing as a transmission line. Things get much more uh, complicated and we have to uh, uh, start uh, paying attention to what Mr. Maxwell has instead of what uh, Mr. Kirchhoff has. So in the case of CMOS, I've got a very low impedance, maybe 3 ohms, a uh, trace in between would be medium, say 65 ohms, and the load would be megs and puffs. And so if this distance from there to there on a modern circuit is more than, say, maybe a half inch away, and in some cases a lot less than that, then I can end up with this significant difference in voltage between what it sees at the source and what it sees at the load as I'm going through this switching edge and that's where I get reflections going back and forth between the two. Now if I was to look at that on an oscilloscope I would see that here is the driver it starts at some voltage I guess this was a 1 to about a 3.3 volt driver I was using here so it comes down and then it levels off and that's what it looks like at the driver. That's that red line right there. Now when I look at what it, the signal looks like at the receiver there is some time of flight so this signal has dropped all the way 
from 3.3 volts down to almost 0 volts and at the receiver it doesn't know anything's happened and then finally that that wave front gets to the receiver so it starts falling off but then if it is not terminated I get undershoot and then ringing with an exponential decay now when that happens that can cause all sorts of evil if you can imagine that this signal is coming down and this is one volt that's about 1.2 volts and you notice that the the signal has flattened out now why in the world would that signal flatten out at that point wouldn't you expect that it would kind of round under a bit well what's happened here is that the input to the receiver has got protection diodes or input clamping diodes and so consequently it comes down and then the clamping diodes clamp the voltage so it doesn't take out the receiver well if I look at normal uh, silicon technology the knee of the curve in the diode is 0.707 volts here I'm at about 1.2 maybe 1.3 volts do you think that this thing is clamping a little bit of current you bet it is but when it's clamping current do you think it's warming up the input protection diodes in this load absolutely so this can cause all sorts of skullduggery all sorts of problems and problems caused by ringing overshoot and undershoot include but are not limited to physical device burnout I can physically uh, either burn out the clamping diodes, the protection diodes on the input side, or I might be pulling so much current that I burn out the driver uh, on the driver side. I could end up with that ringing uh, phenomenon giving me double clocking. I could have noise or a timing margin deficit. Well, now that we're talking about uh, especially uh, the, the higher speed uh, memory circuits and so on and so forth, uh, we don't have any time uh, for uh, margins that are not absolutely necessary so you have to watch out for this stuff it can create differential EMI if you want to look for the root of almost all EMI it is typically caused because of ringing or it's greatly exacerbated I can't say that all of its caused because of that but it's definitely exacerbated common mode EMI crosstalk crosstalk can be greatly 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 enhanced because of ringing ground bounce and plain noise ringing plays directly into this stuff and that again is where a lot of our EMI comes from is uh, because of the ringing uh, inner symbol interference leads to data errors and so the bottom line of this is if you're using modern circuitry you must terminate your signal you've got and there are multiple ways to do this the next section will go into that and away we go so signal integrity electromagnetic compliance training for mere mortals uh, you've read that before off we go